Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at how to link plots using Plotly in R. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now when we're talking about linking plots, and this is something you have to see rather than talk about, but when we're talking about linking plots, we're talking about where when you highlight data points in one plot, it highlights those same data points in the other plot. That's kind of what we're talking about here. But in order for that to happen, they have to be linked. And that involves creating a particular type of data set that allows for this to happen. So let me go ahead and start showing you what we're going to be using. And as we go through these examples, it'll make sense. So right here, we have our four libraries we're going to be using, our packages. ECDAT is where our data comes from. Plotly, of course, is the star of the video. That's where we're going to be making our interactive plots. Dplyr is just for, you know, running the functions. And Crosstalk is the new package that we haven't seen in the past. And the Crosstalk package has functions inside it that allow us to link our plots using specific functions, as we will see. So let's start by creating some scatter plots here. So we're going to start right here in line six. And so in line seven, this is just some basic data cleaning. We're going to filter the PSID data set. And basically what's happening is that we're going to remove any um, data that has an education number higher than 30. Now the, the reason for this is that in, when some people collect data, they'll use the code 99 or 95 to mean like, you know, missing or they're the person did not respond. But, you know, education doesn't go up to level 99 traditionally. You know, we, it stops around, you know, 15, 17 or whatever if they count college as grades. So we're just going to remove the 99s and the 95s from the education variable so that we only have like, you know, you know, 1 to like 15 or 17. So from first grade all the way up to like maybe graduate school. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an object called share underscore us or share us. And that is going to basically be um, based off of um, the object that we're making in line seven. Now it's really hard to explain what the share data, um, what the share data function really does here. It's kind of weird in terms of how it works, but it's one of those things where you just have to like, okay, maybe you check the doc documentation on your own time, but for now, just kind of trust me uh, in terms of what, it, in terms of what it's going to do using this shared data dollar sign new and putting this our data set that we created in line seven here is going to allow us to link our scatter plots that is what it's doing okay now what we're going to do now is we're going to make our two scatter plots because we're going to link them so we're going to have one that deals with hours and earnings and, and another one that deals with education and earnings so we're going to make them both right now because if you've seen the prior videos, you're already familiar with how to make scatter plots using Plotly. So we don't have to go over that again. So notice that we're using the data set shared US. That's the one that allows us to share or link the plots, if you will. We have our Plotly code right here, hours and earnings, X and Y. Now this information right here for the, uh, the ad markers is for making our, our scatter plot. But the stuff inside the parentheses here, I'm making the dots bigger for the video so that you can easily see when it appears in a second. You don't have to do this part when you make your own dots or when you make your own scatter plots, but this is just for the video so you can see things. Now, starting in line 16, we make our second plot. So instead of hours as our X, we have education as our X. That's the only difference. And the rest of the code is the same. Now we're going to go ahead and actually make our plot and then we're going to remake it several times using various highlight functions. That'll make more sense in a second. But I'm now going to be here in line 20. So we're using a function called subplot. It allows us to display multiple plots on one screen at a time. This is I think from as similar to like the NF row function that you often use when you're trying to make a grid using base R. So we have our two plots here, P1 that comes from line 11. P2, that comes from line 16. Those are our two objects. The title on the x-axis, yes, we want that. The shared y is true. In other words, if you look closely at our two plots, they have the same variable on the y-axis. 
So in line of 17, you can see it for the P2 plot, and for line for uh, in line 12, you can see it for the P1 plot. That is where they're linked up at. That is what's going to be used to affect them. And then we're hiding the legend because we don't want to see the legend. So we go ahead and press Control Enter. See what happens, and you can see right there we have our little screen here. So you can see everything is nice and clear. You can see the big giant dots. I, I did that on purpose. You might not want them to be that big. And of course, if I select an area, it zooms right, right into that area. And you can see that when they zoom, both plots zoomed. So if I go back out here, let's see here, zoom out. If I go back out here, reset axes, and if I zoom over here, I'll get the same results. You can see that is why they're linked so that when you highlight or zoom in on one particular plot, it affects the other one as well. Now again, when you will want to do this depends on your purpose, but you now know that it is possible. If I click on one, you can see now that the dot I clicked on here is also highlighted in the plot to the right. And of course the opposite can be done. I can click on the plot see here reset if I redo that I can also do it for the other one but I'm not gonna waste time on that so let's wait wait hold on yeah so let's go ahead and move on so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some highlighting options and so we're gonna first do the plotly select I'm just gonna show you how this works Okay, so in this line of code, what's unique this time is notice that we have one more piece of information here, one more function that we're using that starts in line 27, highlight. That's all that's new here. The rest of this is all the same, and I'm going to sh show you how this works right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and press Control Enter to run this. And so now watch what happens when I highlight a particular area. Okay, now when I do that, notice how it doesn't zoom in like before, but instead it highlights these dots that I selected over here and also highlights them in the plot over here. That's what's new in this particular plot. And so again, <clears throat> if you're trying to, you know, explore the data, this could come in handy. Now, for our next plot, we're gonna do Plotly Hover. That's our, another type of highlighting. And so this will make sense in a second. Okay, I press Control Enter. It's all the same code. The only difference is right here, this command, Plotly Hover. That's it. And so now, when I do something, you can see how it still zooms in, but Hold on, let me make, uh, but notice how when I zoom over on the dot, it will automatically highlight it. So let me show you that again. So if I zoom over a dot, it automatically highlights it on both plots. So if I zoom over here, you can see as I hover over different dots, those dots are highlighted in both plots. That is what the Plotly Hover function does, or the plotly hover argument, if you will, command, whatever you want to call it. Now, we're just about done. What we're going to do this time is we're going to make a new link and we're going to make different plots. So in our first example, we had two scatter plots. This time we're going to have a bar chart and a scatter plot, different plots, and we're going to show you how they can be linked as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So down here in line 34, I'm using my shared data again, this argument with the dollar sign new. This is my data set, but now my key is a categorical variable ver uh, married, excuse me. So in other words, people can be married, they can be divorced, they can be un never married, whatever you wanna call it. And this is all coming from the PSID data set, which is in the ECDAT package. So we're gonna go ahead and make this object called share underscore div. Now we're going to make our 
bar plot here, bar chart, excuse me. And again, this should all be a review. So we're using our data set shared div. Plotly is our tool. We're gonna group by married. That's their marital status, single, never married, divorced, widow, whatever. We're going to summarize, you know, we're gonna count them by their marital group. And then we're going to actually make our bar here. And then the bar mode is gonna be overlay. That'll make more sense in a second. So let's see here, we're gonna go ahead and make this. And we'll take a look at it in a second. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is make our scatter plot here. We're just gonna call it bubble for short. That's what we're gonna do. You've seen all this before. This is the same code as prior. We're just reusing it this time. We didn't have to make it again, but we chose to. So we're gonna go ahead now and do this. And then we're gonna remove the legend and you're going to see the actual scatter plot. Again, we don't have to remove the legend, but we're going to. So now that we're ready, so we're using the function subplot. This is going to allow us to display multiple plots on the screen at one time, um, bar chart and bubble, and we're going to hide the legend. So go ahead and press enter. And you can see we have the two plots right there. Now, what's gonna make this unique is that, notice that if I click on never married, so you can see right here, I have about 681 people who have never been married in my data set. I click on this. If you look to your right, all the dots that are highlighted, those are the dots of people who have never been married. So you can see how they compare with their, their hours and their earnings over time. If I click on divorce, I have about 645 people. You can see now that only the dots that refer to divorced people are now highlighted and the, and the dots that were referred to as never married have faded off. If I look at people who are separated, you can see again, these dots to the right only refer to people who have never been married. So I can have access to my categorical data on the left, their marital status, and then on the right, I can have some access to some of their quantitative data, their, their, uh, their earnings by hours or earnings per hour, how much money they made based on their, the number of hours they worked. That is where you can really play with these in different ways. Now, how practical that is, it always depends on what type of question you're trying to ask but now you know that these things are possible. So what I'll do now is I'm going to summarize what we talked about and wrap this video up. So in this particular video, we looked at how to link different plots that you might make in Plotly for whatever your purpose might be, or that in when you select data in one, it is also represented in the other visual that you might be making. So the main thing that is new here for our purposes is this, um, argument right here, share data, dollar sign new, where you have to put in the data that you want to share. And then you use that new data set <clears throat> for the purpose of making your various plots. So we made two scatter plots at first. Now, also what's new for our purposes is the subplot, which allows you to display multiple plots on, this, on your screen at one time. This is another uh, function I believe that's used with uh, pl Plotly. And so by doing that and making sure you indicate the shared Y, you can see both plots at the same time and imp the, the, the behavior you put in one will be displayed in the other one and vice versa. So we learned about how to select and how to hover over things. Then we learned how to make a, a plot where you had two different types of you know, plots. So we had a bar chart and a scatter plot this time. And then you can see the results right here. So. I want to thank you so much for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again so much for watching and take care.